Good evening. Welcome to our online service on the 20th of January 2021. I'm really, really glad that you're here watching, whether you're watching right now live or whether you're watching back later. It's good to have you joining us uh, as we worship God and as we hear from his word together. Hope you're receiving me uh, loud and clear. Let's just take a quick look and see um, what is happening. Yes, we've got some people tuned in. That is fantastic. And I see some comments there already, like Muriel, Jean, Isabel, Rowley, David, Roland, Thomas, Dorothy, Vivian, Anna, Kathleen, Brian and Barbara, Dorothy, Evelyn, Doreen, Nigel and Olive, Kathleen and Thomas are all watching and I'm sure there's others as well uh, along with us. That is fantastic. Like Sandra is there too. How brilliant. How good to have you all here. And I trust that you are well and that you're uh, staying safe, staying well, surviving things so far. And uh, please, if anybody is watching who is not well, our prayers are with you. Anyone who is struggling at this time or unwell at this time or facing difficulties and problems at this time, please be assured that um, we are praying for you. And we'll take some time to pray later on in this service. Um, can I briefly give you an advertisement or two? Can I give you a quick reminder that we have numerous opportunities to meet uh, during the week, we obviously can't have any face-to-face -face meetings, but we do have some groups that meet on Zoom and those happen most days of the week. So I really encourage you to take up that opportunity and to join with one of those groups. Then also, um, if you have friends, neighbours, family who would... Um, not just be able very easily to, to join with these Facebook Live broadcasts, but they do have a phone, then give them this number 0749710199. So really it's a local number there, as you see, just 10199 is really the bit you need to remember. Nice easy number. And um, if anybody rings that, then for about 10 or 12 minutes they'll be treated to a service, um, a morning prayer service, which is done by myself. So um, it is pre-recorded, but hopefully it'll be helpful and it'll be updated uh, each week, probably on about Thursday or Friday. I will, all being well, upload uh, a new version and it will tie in with what we're doing on the Sunday as well. So the, those folks that listen to it will get something uh, related to what we're looking at in our Facebook Live service on the Sunday. Okay, hope that makes sense. Um, let me just greet those who've joined us in these last few minutes, like Irene, Elizabeth, and Joan, and Charlotte, and Vera, and John. How good is that to have all of you with us? What a wonderful thing it is to be getting together online. Now, let me hopefully press the right button here and put up the words of this song. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? I wonder do you remember this one? It's a, a lovely new song really um, and the chorus brings in again and again those words, yet not I but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Uh, so I'm going to sing this. Hopefully you are receiving nice and clearly. Here we go. My guitar was really out of tune for some reason. I think it may be a temperature thing. But it's half back in tune. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to 
to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. Through this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine, I can sing all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hold, my Shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley He will lead. been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven, the future sure, the price it has been paid for Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon and he was raised to overthrow the grave to this I hold my sin has been defeated Jesus now and ever is my plea the chains are released, I can sing, I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Last verse. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said, that he will bring me home and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne to this I hold my hope is only Jesus all the glory evermore to him when the is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, Till my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Gracious Lord, we pray that you would send um, your Holy Spirit upon us, upon each and every person watching and listening uh, this evening or later. We pray that we would know that our hope is only Jesus. Pray that we would be refreshed and renewed by that knowledge and that we would be built up in him tonight. Through his name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's um, come to our first prayer together, our prayer of confession. 
Lovely. Thank you for the uh, comments. The prayer of confession where we're going to acknowledge that uh, all is not right in our lives, but we also acknowledge that God is ready and willing to mop up and blot out those sins. So let's pray to him. A moment of quiet to bring to mind things that have been wrong in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, and in what we've left out. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's use these words together. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. I think before we come to our scripture main Bible reading, I want to actually read, uh, to do what we said there, to praise the Lord. And I'm going to do it by reading from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows of how we are formed, he remembers that we are but dust. The life of mortals is like grass, they flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. His kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We're going to continue in a moment with our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which we have been looking at from way back in about April or May or sometime like that. And we're in Acts chapter 16. And I just want to give you 
Um, very brief recap of it before I read. And in particular, if I may, I'll give you a quick little recap of some uh, geography. It's not all about a geography lesson, but I am just going to remind you, hopefully, this is going to work. Let's get a little map of the Mediterranean, all the places you'd love to go on holiday, but we can't at the minute. Um, I'm sure you would. Where are we now? Let's see. Ah, oh, here we are. Yes, good. Let's undo that. Okay. I'm sure you'd love to be over in Italy, you know, on your holiday or in Greece. Well, we'll be going there in Acts. Um, or you'd love to be down in uh, in Egypt, maybe, or even in Turkey. Well, we're going to Turkey tonight. Um, just about. So you remember that, of course, the Christian church really begins here in Jerusalem. And um, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and filled them and the gospel rippled out in waves, if you like, like ripples in a pond into Samaria. Think of the Ethiopian man heading down south into Ethiopia after he was converted. Think of um, missionaries heading out in these directions as well that we're not told so much about in the Acts of the Apostles, but we know that they did. But then the really significant move was when the gospel got established up here. Do you remember what this place is called? It's Antioch. It's Antioch. And it was a real a real center uh, for the early church and it was the first church that was really, really mission minded. And they sent out Paul and Barnabas to go across here to Cyprus, which actually was Barnabas's home place. And they traveled through it for a bit and then they took a boat and headed up here and they hit this place that you would call Asia Minor. This whole area that would nowadays be Turkey, uh, Asia Minor, okay, the province of Asia. And uh, Paul and Barnabas traveled, sorry my map's getting a bit confusing now, but they traveled up to Pisidian Antioch and then they traveled down to Iconium and then Lystra and then Derbe and then um, they returned uh, back, not the short way, back straight to Antioch, but they went back the long way um, round, okay? And except that they missed out Cyprus. So then they're back in Antioch. Then the second journey that we're going to hear about, um, they headed off, let's see if I can get a different color up for this. Is this going to work? Um, they started in Antioch, there we are, in the white, and they headed this way. So we're going to hear about them heading back as far as Lystra. Okay, and eventually over the next few weeks, they're going to press on uh, across Asia Minor, they're going to press on into Greece or Macedonia, and um, they're going to do some journeying around there as well. Right, that's very messy. Let's get rid of all of that stuff, and let's get rid of that. Okay, hopefully you can still see me. So that second missionary journey began, as we saw um, last week, with pastoral concern and care. It was seriously threatened by a big disagreement between Paul and Barnabas, which led to a split. But by the grace of God, uh, the mission carried on. And let's turn to um, let's turn to Act sixteen. And I'm just going to read verses 1 to 5 of Acts chapter 16. Paul came to Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey. So he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they travelled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me just pray. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you would strengthen me as your servant and that you would help each of us to have ears to hear and eyes opened to see wonderful things in your scripture. 
for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. So we're meeting a real superstar tonight, a wonderful character of the New Testament. It's Timothy. And uh, he's not an apostle. He's not up there in that inner circle uh, like Peter and James and John and Paul. He's uh, in really in the category of Barnabas and those kind of guys. He's in that, that next circle outwards. And we're hearing today about him. And he crops up again and again in the New Testament. He is one of Paul's closest companions and uh, one of the most significant leaders of the early church. And let's just very briefly look at his background and then at him in this passage and then at what happened next. Okay, so Timothy, first of all, his background. And it's very interesting that we're told um, that he was from Lystra. One of the places that we mentioned there in modern day Turkey, his mother was Jewish and a believer and his father was a Greek. OK, so um, he's from a mixed background. His parents are what uh, was often referred to as a mixed marriage. I mean, we use that term a lot here in Ireland. Um, but of course, this marriage here wasn't between two branches of the Christian church, which properly we would really call an interchurch marriage. Um, this was um, two totally different religions altogether. His mother was a Jew and his father was a Greek. He may have been interested in the Jewish faith, but he wasn't uh, a Jew. So from this background comes Timothy and we know from one of Paul's letters, uh, 2 Timothy, towards the end of the New Testament, that um, Timothy's mother and grandmother, whose names we have as well given there, they were called Lois and Eunice, and they taught Timothy the Bible. Um, so perhaps from their Jewish background, they taught him the Old Testament scriptures. And at some stage, Timothy's mother became a Christian. That's what it means when Paul says she was a believer. So um, Timothy is brought up in this atmosphere filled with the Bible and presumably prayer. And uh, so here's a reminder of a couple of things. First of all, here's a reminder that uh, if you are in a marriage where you don't share the same faith with your husband or wife, um, that doesn't mean that blessings are not going to come to your family. Um, Timothy's mother uh, gave birth and brought up this wonderful uh, leader in the church. Um, so don't ever think that, um, that, that marriage has somehow, um, you know, sort of uh, caused some damage to your, to your family uh, or something like that. Timothy is from this uh, background where his parents are, it seems, sharply different views of, uh, on religion. Uh, and here he is. Uh, second thing, of course, and more importantly than that, that the power of a, of a parent and, or grandparent who prays and who teaches the Bible. No, it wasn't the parents, uh, it wasn't the mother who, who made Timothy a Christian. It seems probably it was when Paul came along to Lystra, perhaps uh, a couple of years previous to this, on the first missionary journey that Timothy came to faith. But having been brought up in that scripture background, it was a wonderful, wonderful blessing to him. And perhaps the prayers of his mother and grandmother were a huge part in him coming to faith. So parents and grandparents, pray for your children and grandchildren and do all you can to bring them up being exposed to the word of God in the Bible. Um, wonderful thing. So Timothy's background is fascinating. Uh, it, it's, it has this mixture uh, and then he comes to faith. Then what about him in the present? Well, um, the believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. They spoke well of him. Now, we know that there's a danger in people speaking well of us. And we know that the Lord Jesus himself said, Woe to you when all people speak well of you. 
um, because he's saying that perhaps uh, you're not a genuine <laughs> the believer because if you genuinely follow Jesus, you're not going to be universally popular. So the important thing here is that it was the Christians, the believers, who the faithful in Christ spoke well of Timothy. So it is a blessing when people recognize in you that there's a godliness, that the grace of God is at work in you and that it's making a difference, that it shows. And it seems that in Timothy's case, it wasn't just in his own town of Lystra, but his reputation had spread to the neighboring town of Iconium. So what a blessing it was that he had this this good name with the fellow believers. And so here comes then this call into ministry. In verse 3, Paul wanted to take him along on the journey. Timothy's called into Christian service. No doubt there would have been big temptation to stay in Lystra. I'm sure that a young man, because we know he was young still, a young man with his abilities and talents could have had all sorts of careers, no doubt. Um, He may have been able to go into law or into teaching or into some other profession, maybe even medicine or something like that. Instead, he decides to follow this call to go off with this strange uh, character, Paul, who was not liked by everybody, and to join his missionary band and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's called into ministry. And there's many different forms of ministry. For most of us, we're called to serve the Lord where we are. But for some of us, we may be called to move from where we are and to go into full-time ministry. I wonder if there's somebody watching or listening to this broadcast and the Lord may be putting it into your heart that there's a call to Christian service and ministry, perhaps to preaching and teaching the word and to being a shepherd and pastor of the flock. Well, what do we learn from Timothy? First of all, it's not your background that matters. So perhaps your parents and grandparents were in the Christian ministry. That's wonderful. What a blessing. But that's not what defines you ultimately. Perhaps you feel that your background is, is not so impressive. Well, remember Timothy. His background was mixed. He had wonderful blessings on one side and on the other side, uh, not so much. So it's not about your background. The question we need to ask is, first of all, Are you a disciple? Because we're told here a disciple named Timothy lived in Lystra. Um, So are you following Jesus? Are you genuinely, have you given your life to him? Is it the deepest desire of your heart to serve him and to work for him? Sadly, sometimes people can come into Christian ministry and um, there's really a question mark over over their their belief um, in him. And it doesn't work out well. It's it's very, very difficult. So make sure that you're a disciple of him, that you're following him. And then the second question, is there an inward sense of call? Do you feel compelled to be in ministry? And then is there an outward calling? Are there people within the church who think well of you and who are saying, you know, we think you should consider ministry? in the church, in a preaching capacity. Well, there's a lot to learn from Timothy. When we have that combination of an inward calling and outward confirmation, then we know that there's something worth listening to. And that goes not just for getting ordained and getting coloured or something like that. It goes for any big change uh, that we may be contemplating in our lives is our inward sense of calling and are we getting confirmation from wise people around us who we trust. So Timothy's launched into this ministry. Uh, Paul, perhaps rather strangely to us, has him circumcised. That wouldn't be what we'd normally expect in an ordination service to take place. And we know that for Paul, it wasn't that he felt there was any requirement for Timothy to be circumcised in terms of his own salvation or anything like that, but that 
in order that Timothy would find acceptance with the Jewish people to whom he would be going and preaching, that that stumbling block of him being uncircumcised would be removed. And so off they go into ministry and Timothy finds, first of all, early blessings. In verse 5, the churches were strengthened in the faith and daily grew in numbers. The ministry of Paul and Timothy is blessed. And then as the New Testament goes on, you find so all the more. You find that in Paul's letters, Timothy is there as a companion. And often he's named and mentioned as someone who is close to Paul and someone who's helpful to Paul. And indeed, towards the end of Paul's life, in one of his last letters to Timothy, he writes very affectionately to his, uh, to his follower, to, to this young man who he's brought on. And he says how effectively he's handing over the baton to Timothy, who is now going to be a very significant leader in the faith. It spurs the question, doesn't it? Who are the Timothys that we should be encouraging now? Who are, those, who are the people? We should be looking out for them. Who are the people that the Lord is calling to be the next generation of leaders, whether ordained or lay people? Where are the Timothys? And what are we doing to invest in that generation coming after us? I find that very challenging. I think I'm very tempted to try and do it all myself. And I really need to learn the lesson here from Paul that where he went, he picked up other people to join his team and then they were sent out. So there was a multiplying of the ministry. I think that's something we really need to pray about in our churches. Do you know the people who we encourage in their faith and the people whose gifts God deploys in ministry can end up being so significant. We tend to think that the significant leaders are the ones who are in the White House or in um, Leinster House or in 10 Downing Street or wherever. And of course, those people are very important and we must pray for them very hard. But actually, those who share the gospel of Jesus Christ can be hugely significant in many, many lives. Let's make sure that we're investing in that crucial work. Let's pray and then uh, we'll, we'll bring it to a close. Heavenly Father, I feel as though these few fairly random thoughts on Acts chapter 16 are... The, it's, 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 it's so little and so weak, Lord, what, what I have shared and said. But we thank you that... We can take encouragement from every paragraph, every sentence of the Bible. We thank you for Timothy. We thank you for this joyful sense of his calling to be a disciple. We thank you for his background. We thank you for his calling. We thank you for his significance in the early church. And we pray, Lord, that you would raise up a thousand Timothys across this land. Men and women who will share the good news, who will shepherd the flock, who will humble themselves and become significant players in the kingdom of God. And we pray that you would raise them up even from among us here in Donegal. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just very briefly uh, pray. Uh, as you know, there are a number of people uh, known to us in our own uh, fellowship and beyond who are uh, ill with, with COVID-19. And let's pray for them. And let's pray for all who are sick. And let's pray for all the needs of this time. And let's pray for unity and for clarity and for faithfulness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your calling to us to be your church. We thank you for this wonderful fellowship to which you have drawn us. 
We thank you that we belong to one another. We pray that at these times which are so fraught with difficulty and danger, that you would draw us ever closer to yourself and so closer to one another. We pray that you would grant tremendous wisdom to all leaders in the political and church realms. We pray that you would give comfort and strength to all who are suffering and struggling at this time. Particularly, we pray for those who are in hospital at this moment. We also ask you, Heavenly Father, to deal graciously with those who mourn at this time. We pray that you would send your blessing upon the nations of the world. We pray for the United States of America. We pray for Uganda. We pray for the United Kingdom, for the European Union, for Northern Ireland and for the Republic of Ireland. We pray not only for peace, but that we would be well governed. We pray particularly at this time, Lord, for the essential services of our country, for the medical, for the food supply, for the uh, services in regarding mental health. We pray for the education system with so much difficulty and so many changes and steps forward and steps backward. We pray for our teachers and all involved in education. We pray particularly for those young people with special or additional needs and for those who work among them. Lord, we pray for clear pathways forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray for ourselves. Lord, we pray that you would fill us with the fruit of the Spirit. We pray for love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. We ask, Lord, that we would be filled abundantly with these qualities, that we would love you and that we would love our neighbours. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Uh, if you've got time, I'm going to go finish with one final hymn and it's Go Forth and Tell. And uh, it's slightly ironic, maybe, because I know we can't go forth. You know, I'm not. And I know it says in one of these verses, the doors are open wide. And wouldn't we be delighted if they actually were? But you get the point that there are many, many opportunities to share. I was talking to someone just today who was saying how um, someone had come to, to faith in Christ through listening to online broadcasts from a church. Very ordinary, very normal um, broadcasts and someone had come to faith. And this person actually discovered other friends uh, that they'd known for years and that had come to, 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 to faith in Jesus and become believers. And uh, he was just so encouraged and so buzzing with it. And it was wonderful. Uh, great encouragement. He may be watching and he may know who he is. Um, so let's just all be Timothy's and follow go forth and tell O church of God awake God saving news to all the nations Take, proclaim Christ Jesus 
Savior, Lord, and King, that all the world His worthy praise may sing. Go forth and tell God's love embraces all. He will in grace respond to How can they call if they have never heard the gracious invitation of His Word? Go forth and tell where still the darkness lies in wealth or want the sinner surely dies. Give us, O Lord, concern of heart and mind, a love like yours which cares for all mankind. Go forth and tell the doors are open wide. Share God's good gifts, let no one be denied. Live out your life as Christ your Lord shall choose. Your ransomed powers for his soul glory use. Go forth and tell, O Church of God, arise. Go in the strength which Christ your Lord supplies. Go till all nations his great name adore and serve him, Lord and King, forever. Serve him, Lord and King, for evermore. That's what we want to do. And may God's grace be with you as we depart from here. And as we hopefully meet again soon on Friday at 1 o'clock and on Sunday at 11 a.m. God bless you and uh, stay safe and keep the faith. And better still, spread the good news. Bye for now. I can find the right slide. Here we are. Bye for now.